all-new Ellen mother-daughter duo Kate Hudson and Goldie Hawn, plus the new Bachelor, Colton Underwood. If all goes well, then I'm going to go back to his fantasy suite. <laughs> Ellen, today at 3 on NBC4. And we know your life is bumper to bumper. You need someone working for you. That's why NBC4 gives you two and a half hours of news starting at 4 p.m. We're working around your afternoons with breaking news and the most accurate weather in town. NBC4 News at 4 for you. Blog Talk Radio. Hello, folks. How you doing? Guess who? It's me. Danny Tisdale, and you are on my show, The Danny Tisdale Show. And, of course, my show is your show, uh, and I am great to have you here with us today. And, of course, you know, I'm glad that you're with us any and every day, uh, and especially on the podcast where we talk to the leaders, legends, and trailblazers, wherever they may be in Harlem, connected to Harlem or somewhere around the world. Uh, and, of course, we have a special guest today. But before we speak to our guests, let's talk about what's happening uh, in the world of Harlem. Uh, 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 if I could do this over again, I would, because we're starting with the negative, and I hate starting with the negative. But the positive is his contribution to Harlem and the, the world, Arthur Mitchell, uh, founder of the Dance Theater of Harlem, passed uh, at 85. Um, we uh, want to send our love and appreciation for his work uh, out to him and the universe uh, that uh, still has him as a part of it. Uh, uh, look uh, around the corner is uh, Circle of Sisters, which is our annual, well, not, not our annual event, but part of Harlem's uh, uh, world uh, that takes place uh, in October, if my memory serves me correct, and that is a featured guest with Wendy Williams. We, uh, there's also a fundraiser for the May South Cinema uh, in Harlem, and that's their new inaugural Albee Awards with uh, Albert Maisels. Um and uh, there's quite a bit more, but we want to get right into our guest, but before we uh, write to our guest, before we get to our guest, Check us out on Twitter at twitter.com backslash hwmag, on Facebook at facebook.com backslash Harlem World Magazine, uh, and of course on our website at harlemworldmagazine.com. And if you have some trouble and you're online and can't get to those places, just put our uh, Harlem World Magazine in your search bar and it'll take you to all the things that we do. Uh, now let's get right to our guest, which I have been waiting for. Our guest is Jenny Lamette. Uh, she is the daughter of director Sidley Lamette and granddaughter of Lena Horn, Harlem fave Lena Horn. Let's get it right. Uh, she is author right. of Rachel. <laughs> get it right. <laughs> uh, she's author of Rachel Getting Married, for which she received a New York. Film Critics Award, Toronto Film Critics Award, also a Washington, D.C. Film Critics Association Award, and an NAACP Image Award. Uh, she is also author of the screen adaption of The Center Cannot Hold, The Language of Flowers, and uh, Remember Me. I think it's Doctored Remember Me. Yeah. Uh, Bobby Sue, great, I got it right. Honeymoon yeah. with Harry and The Mummy. <laughs> she is currently at work on the Untitled Monsters franchise for Universal Studios. Uh, she authored the, uh, the pilots, The Wisemans of Westport, Crazy Town, and The Bears Forts, and consulted mm -hmm. for Fox Television, Sleepy Hollow. Uh, she is presently at work on a series of pilots for Amazon Television, her third series pilot for CBS television and a series of pilots for UK's across the pond uh, blueprint pictures. Uh, she lives in Manhattan with her two children and I don't know how she finds time to do anything <laughs> with her family. Uh, thank you, Miss Lamette for being with us. How are you? I'm very, it's Jenny and I'm very well. Thank you. And uh, um, one of my kids is, He's kind of grown. I mean, he's grown, and he is out of the house. So There's only one kid in the house, but, but uh, thank you. Still. I take a lot I, of naps. I, I, oh, 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 oh. <laughs> well, at least I'm going to warn you, because in the second half of our conversation, I, I really want to know myself, you know, what is the tip for – don't t don't answer now, but what is the tip for 
you know, doing all the work that you do, and you do it at a high level. So I'm going to ask you that yeah. later. So I'm prepping you now for that question. But, uh, Jenny, thank you, thank you, thank you for being on the show. No, thank you for having me on the show. I'm really happy to to be here. I love what you guys do. Um, I think it's thank vital you. and it's necessary, and I'm happy to talk about whatever you want to talk about. Certainly so, and you know, I, I you know, I wanted to get right into it uh, because you know, part of the conversation is you know whose idea was it for Jonathan Demme's rarely seen cinema Jenny Lamette Select series that starts on September 23rd at the Jacob Burns Film Center in Pleasantville, mm-hmm. New York. Whose idea was that? Mm-hmm. And it's such a great well, idea. John- well, Jonathan, um, Jonathan was the, is the, goodness, he passed away, um, and he is yes. the director for Rachel Getting Married, an extraordinary American artist, I mean, really singular, and That's he right. always, um, his support of, I guess you could say, yeah, um, marginalized filmmakers was um, is something that he, was always really, really deep for him, and he started mm. the Rarely Seen series at the Jacob Byrne Center um, to showcase movies that he thought were rarely seen and he never understood why. Oh, fantastic. Um, And he did it, yeah, and he did it for years. And when Jonathan passed, his wife, Joanne Howard, is an extraordinary, extraordinary woman, she asked me if I would like to curate the first series in his passing and I, Mm. you know, burst into tears and said, of course, of course, of course. And then I started thinking about... um, there are many ways this could have gone. And I started thinking about the idea of what does it mean to be seen, really seen. Mm. And um, I thought about the men and women who lived before I did. And I, I don't know how old you are, Dennis, but I'm going to, um, <coughs> the men and women who lived before, <laughs> before I did. I don't either. Whom, <laughs> it's funny how that works. Isn't it? <laughs> um, I was thinking about the men and women of color who lived before you and I, and even now, mm. and what and the dangers and the stakes involved in actually being seen, um, and how what that really means, and what that means to mm. be a visible person of color um, in the United States of America, and what what does it mean? Also, um, my grandmother was recently on a, on a stamp; she was issued a postage stamp, and That's I right. thought, yeah. well. Yeah, and I thought that's really a cool way into a conversation of what does it mean to have mm. a person of color be a face of the United States of America. So, and I was also thinking about how uh, the negotiations required for people of color in crossing the street, going to the store, getting pulled over wow. by the cops, all this stuff. Um, right. And for her, it was a different time, a different era. Uh, a lot has changed, a lot hasn't changed, but what mm. the stakes were for her and every single artist in those movies, I mean, the background dancers, yeah. the extras, Right. Um, what did it mean, mean uh, what were the risks involved in, act- involved in actually mm. being seen? Um, and that's why I thought, besides the fact that the movies h- had a limited circulation, because movies about black people did um, and still do, um, right. And the sort of the allegorical, or is it a metaphorical? I should know that. I'm a writer, but um, <laughs> idea of of visibility, of visibility, and that's why I was like, okay, we're just going to show all grandma's movies, and what does that what does that mean? And uh, mm-hmm. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, that, that is really cool, and that's uh, really great stuff. And I love the way that uh, you kind of process that mentally and then uh through the film series really makes it yeah you know physical and real at the same time yeah. um and and I, and before we kind of talk more about uh um your grandmother's work and and the series uh and the you know what film you exactly start with what do you think made um Jonathan Demi a, a master director um he's one of the most thorough directors I've ever uh, witnessed, and, and um, research. And he, um, no, I mean of course, no. but in terms oh, of yeah. his consideration, of course research, but in terms of his consideration 
to the detail of the thing and mm-hmm. how nothing, um, the only thing that worked for him was honesty, um, um, theatrical honesty, dramatic honesty, um, honesty in the writing, honesty in the costumes, honesty in the makeup, mm-hmm. honesty in the sex mm-hmm. art, honesty mm-hmm. in every. I see. And, right. And, yeah. And, it, if, um, and there are those who would make a movie who would say, okay, if something is, is good enough. And for him, it wasn't about, yeah, and then for him, it wasn't about uh, something being good enough. So some, something was either mm. honest or it wasn't. Yeah. And yeah. whether or not the movie was a success, excuse me, um, it was probably second to whether or not the movie was. And um, he also happened to have an extraordinary musicality and a very mm. particular visual style and a, and, a, and a freedom and a willingness to... A willingness to let the movie go and a willingness to let the scene go and um, a willingness as every as you as one knows if they followed his work uh, to use non actors and to create a place of such safety and comfort that it became okay um, and I appreciate that sensibility enormously uh, most uh, uh, definitely, and I am a huge film fan and I'm a huge film fan of those who make film where I completely get lost in the film I I forget it's a film and I I'm looking at it and Mm -hmm. I think it's real you know yeah Uh, and I'm not going to mention the film I'm just going to give an example I'm not going to talk about the name of it the title or anything like that but you know, it was a period film set in Britain uh, 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 in the 1800s, and uh, the setting was incredible. The dialogue was incredible. The costuming was incredible. Uh, the the lighting was perfect. But the next thing you saw was a young lady pulling out a cigarette that she just looked like she pulled out of a pack of cigarettes uh, from yesterday instead of the 1800s. And it completely, I I woke up to the fact that this was a movie when she did that because, Mm. you know, it wasn't hand rolled, you know, uh, it was bright white, just like it was manufactured the other day. Mm. And, you know, that, that's a, the kind of thing that, you know, I'm always looking for and always stands out. And I of course have never, come across that in in his films until today i'm will not look at silence of the of the lamb i'm just not going to look at it you know it's going to scare me to death i'm not going to be able it's to an dream extraordinary movie yes, extraordinary yes, movie. yes i mean i always think it's a very it's a, i mean she the character of Clarice Clary starling she takes a descent into hell and she and she <laughs> makes a bargain with actual devil and then she slays a monster i mean it's it's a fairy tale and um an extraordinary one i'm i am a feminist and but and one could talk about the feminism of that movie but that makes it less fun um she's just (laughs) you know she's just such a freaking hero um yeah and yeah and so intrepid and yeah an extra i mean yeah it's scary it's and I feel like it's scary because it's so real. That's and exactly it. it. And I can't yeah. get you know, and I can't get past that, you know. Yeah. Which is sad yeah. because it's a great film, you know. Um, oh yeah, there's no there's no real gore in it though. I mean there are a couple of scenes, um uh there's that are maybe a little bit gory, but nothing that would be compared to God, an episode of um you know, uh I guess CSI right. or or or, yeah. or whatever um, where, where they're showing because, it yeah yeah or I mean anything on even on on network television um, uh, but I think that the emotional reality makes you scared that's it's yeah. an amazing yeah. movie and that's that's exactly it you know it's like I've already built up these emotions on what I'm going to see what I'm going to feel <laughs> I don't want to go there and I know all my old mm-hmm. football buddies are like oh come on Tisdale you got to be kidding me yeah well it's true <laughs> that's the way it is okay done um but I wanted to to get back to uh the series and the series opens mm-hmm. with uh your grandmother's uh stormy weather 
Um, mm-hmm. Can you tell us some of the other films that are? I, I, I think she did something like forty films, and uh, if my memory serves me correct, you selected about eight or nine. Uh, that must have been difficult because you know, it's like choosing your, you know, out of your kids, you know, who's your favorite. But well, how did you select the, one, the films oh, that you you did? So, well, first, um, Dennis, I want to say that my daughter just came home, so at any minute she could poke her head and say, Mom, why are you sitting in the closet on the phone? <laughs> just so you know that. Um, hiding from you. I, no. Hiding from you. I picked the ones where she uh, – there. she made a lot of movies where she was the nightclub singer, so her part – could be um, edited out when the movie was distributed below the Mason Dixon line. And um, mm. so I picked, I selected of the many that she was in, those were the movies where she, uh, her character had a name and where she was an integral part of the story. That's pretty simple. That's why I right. picked those. Um, Stormy Weather, Cabin in the Sky, um, I Did It, Death of a Gunslinger. I mean, they're, mm. they're, great uh, movies. they're pretty Great movies, yeah, great movies. Well, and, and, you know, as I mentioned earlier, we just want to let our listeners know they're listening to the Danny Tisdale Show, which is on Harlem World Radio. And, of course, I'm Danny Tisdale, but uh, more importantly, we're speaking to Jenny Lamette uh, about our upcoming um, um, film selections uh, that's going to be part of the Jacob Burms Film Center in Pleasantville, New York, that opens on September 20. Third, and we're going to get mm-hmm. right back to it, um, the conversation. Um, you know, Hollywood is a, a tricky business, and obviously you know that better than I do, and you seem to – you do excel in the business. And I wanted to ask you for, Thank you. you know, parents out there and their kids or even, you know, uh, adults who still want to get into the business – uh, what are there any tips or secrets of success that you could, you know, share with our listeners about the business and, you know, how it works and how, you know, to how you do what you do and do so well. Well, um, you know, sort of to, to begin, I think you can say it's really good to be related to famous people, or that be like hurt, the huh? physical. Uh, no, it doesn't hurt at all. To be, or maybe the, you know, a famous person's identical twin is really freaking helpful. I mean, I'm not <laughs> one of those people who say, oh my goodness, it's all been such a burden. It's not a burden. It's great. And um, it allows access that people who are not related to famous people simply don't mm-hmm. have. So there's that. So any tips or, I, you know, I don't feel like I'm in a place to give advice, but um, mm. necessarily because I had this extraordinary um, advantage. Um, that said, there it has something to do, um, as we were talking before, with um, commitment and time management. Um, I'm, it, you know, your screenplay that you sort of fit that that's halfway finished in your drawer. Um, that doesn't count. It straight up doesn't <laughs> count. <laughs> um, can't use and, it. Can't use it. Nope. Um, and the movie idea that you haven't even shot on your iPhone also doesn't count. Um, mm. What counts is, is something that is a story that you've created from start to finish and you find a venue for it. If it's YouTube, if it's Facebook, um, that's, that stuff, you know, when Rachel getting married was coming, that was uh, 2008. So that stuff wasn't as available or if it was, I had no right. idea how to use it. Right. Um, so I, the commitment to create the thing uh, if it's a poem, it's a poem. If it's a play, it's a play. Whatever it is, to uh, execute it to its completion, um, mm. to I, I'm going to use the word film it for just in case we were talking about filmmakers. But if you're a choreographer, to stage right, it. Right. And when I say stage it, I don't think it means rent out a huge house. I think it means I mean a, a house by meaning um, theater. Um, theater. It means yeah. It means. Um, Stage it in your apartment. If your friend has a bigger apartment, stage it there. If you wrote a screenplay, have a reading. Um, if you wrote a podcast, get it. I mean, there's been a bunch of um, series made from podcasts lately, and and um, right. I think it's really more and more. an amazing way. More and more. Yeah. Uh, so time management, really, and commitment um, are the only things that I 
and those are disciplines that I taught myself uh, by managing my time and committing. That's it. It's kind of like, how do you start the car? You start the car. You know, try to start the car. Um, so those you gotta turn are the, the key. things right. you got to turn the key. And those are then you can't think about it and sit there and oh my god, I got to turn the key. Uh, nope, <laughs> nope, turning the key. So you got to um, turn the key. Got to got to turn the key. Yeah. So those two things um, have served me very, very well. I have an internal ten- tenacity that serves me. Mm. Um, and there are always people who came before me who had it a lot harder and a lot worse. So I, uh, I can't imagine saying something is too difficult. I really can't. Certainly. And, and uh, I was thinking of you, uh, uh, you had mentioned uh, your daughter coming home and I mm-hmm. know you have another child. Do you, uh, the, when you think of, uh, them as professionals, do you automatically say to yourself, well, they're going to work in the industry. I don't care what they want to do. One wants to be a, talking about being a lawyer. One wants to be a, oh my God, a, a I would doctor. Love it if one of them were a lawyer or a doctor. Okay. I mean, okay. but, yes, you have to understand that, that um, my son, who's made, I think, three movies, um, is the mm-hmm. fifth generation of uh, our family, going back to my grandmother's mother to be in showbiz. She was in the tent shows, my grandma's mother in the deep South. So oh yeah, on um, her side of the family, um, I'm generation number four and my son is generation number five on my father's side of the family. uh, His father was an actor in Poland and in the Yiddish theater before him. We don't know because of the uh, Holocaust. So there's a lot of stuff we just don't know. Um, But we're kind of a generational, uh, none of us have ever held a steady gig. Um, we're all, (laughs) we've been, we've been freelance in three. I I heard you hesitate a little bit in saying that. (laughs) (laughs) Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing wrong with that. Um, but we've been pretty much freelancers for five generations. So whatever my kids want to do, I just want them to commit themselves to doing it. Um, if they want to be in, show business and it's called show business it's not called show justice or show nice time um then they should be in show business if, whatever they want to do as long as they're uh doing it to the fullest of their ability and the fullest of their love and that sounds fantastic and and i'm not really surprised after speaking to you that you would um you know say that and uh that says a lot about uh uh, you and uh, being a parent, and, and especially, um, you know, I'm going to say it, it, it's it's great to, you know, continue the family tradition in a way. Um, and uh, I, I think that's exciting in a, in a lot of different ways. Uh, we're already at the uh, last uh, few minutes here, and I wanted to just talk a, a little bit more about the um, – the upcoming series, which is part of the Jacob sure. Burns Film Center. And to let our listeners know, you know, uh, by car, it's only about 30, maybe 40, maybe 50 minutes away. So, you know, oh, jump in the Metro car. North. It's a, yeah, That's I take Metro North well, from 125th Street. Right. And it's a total breeze. And um, this Sunday, which is the opening, I, we found, you know, it's opening with stormy weather. Uh, we're doing a talk back with the wonderful Maisha Kai from The Root. And we also found footage of her singing wow. Stormy Weather in Lady and Her Music. And there's a wonderful, and we're going to screen that, and the wonderful, after the movie, the wonderful difference between a girl singing in an MGM musical, which is what she was, and then the freedom of a 70-year-old woman singing the very same wow. thing. Is really pretty, yeah, it's really pretty extraordinary. And, um, the, you know, if you... The takes are long. These people did not mess around. It's Catherine, the Catherine Dunham dancers, and it's the Nicholas brothers. So if anybody <laughs> is interested in – right? Power. I know, exactly. I could watch the Nicholas brothers 24 – there should be a Nicholas brothers channel as far as I'm concerned. So, um, <laughs> Don't give them an <laughs> idea out buff, there, Jenny. I know, right? If you're a film buff, come see. If you're a history buff, come see. If you're just a human being and want to see some cool movies, come see. Come see. It's a great organization. <laughs> It's a great organization, and it's great mm-hmm. speaking to you. And you uh, I have two. 
I have two questions sure. left. When you're in Harlem, what do you have a favorite place when you come to Harlem? I do, and I like. I really will go to Street Bird and eat chicken like a lot, and and then it's really oh. and I do. <laughs> Yum. Yeah, it's, Yum. Yeah, yeah. You just made yeah, me lick yeah, my yeah. lips, Jenny. I know. It's really freaking good. And that's and there may be other trick <laughs> places and that, but that just happens to be mine and I'm sure that there are people who are listening who are ready to fight me about their favorite place. But for real, <laughs> I really I'm really all about it. Um and what and uh, you know, what's not to what's favorite places? What's not to be a favorite place? Oh, you know what? Studio Museum of Harlem. A hundred percent. Thelma Golden, most extraordinary oh, curator. That's right. That's oh, right. Oh my goodness. One of the she's best. Amazing. She's amazing. Oh, I believe that she's she's curating the Obama Museum. Um, she's her contribution, well, but just to see the art, just to see the art at the Studio Museum of Harlem is probably great my favorite art. way They're to right spend the weekend. Right there on 125th yep. Street. And yep. Jenny, I, I I'm not trying to cut you off, but we're at the last no, three minutes. Thing. And. Are there any uh, social networks, websites that our uh, listeners can stay in contact with you and find out more about Jacob Berms Film Center uh, before the, we the, cut off here? The, the best place is the Jacob, the Jacob Burns Center um, website. I am not a social media person because I'm old and it's like it's, it's my, my son is like, don't do it, Mom. You're going to say something. I know. So I have road rage just anyway. So, <laughs> so the best thing is for me not That's to have fun. access. But Jacob Byrne Center website and Twitter and, and on, on Instagram will give everybody any information they need. You and you know what I'll do? I'll, I'll, when, I, when we post this on the site, I'll uh, post the uh, website for the Byrne Center, awesome. and thank they you. can connect it that way. And we yeah. are right down to the last few minutes. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I didn't you. know if I said thank you enough. Thank for being you. on the show and calling in. I really love talking to you, and I knew this you was too. going to fly by. Thank you, Jenny. You Take I care. I appreciate it. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Well, folks, another uh, uh, great conversation. I enjoyed uh, tremendously speaking to uh, Jenny Lamette and uh, really look forward to the film series. And I hope you guys look forward to the film series so much so that you go and check it out. And um, as we said, we're going to um, get the address for the uh, Jacob Burns Film Center and post it on the website. And you guys probably are saying, well, Tisdale's probably hesitating over there because he's probably looking for the website right now. And, of course, I am. And, of course, I found it uh, the film center is at burnsfilmcenter.org. And uh, again, check it out there at uh, 855-344-0986. Burnsfilmcenter.org, 855-344-0986. Check it out and uh, tell your friends about it and uh, take them along with you. I'm glad you've been uh, on the line with us and you know we'll talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Love you. Just getting up or just getting out the door? We get it. Life in SoCal isn't always 9 to 5. That's why Today in LA's team is going strong at the crack of dawn for you. Shauna, her forecast will tell you what to wear. Alicia, her down to the mile traffic will keep you in the clear. Adrian and Daniela, they'll break down all the morning's breaking news so nothing takes you by surprise. It's simple. You wake up, we'll open your eyes. Today in LA for you. Starting at 4 a.m. Just getting up or just getting out the door? We get it. Life in SoCal isn't always 9 to 5. That's why Today in LA's team is going strong at the crack of dawn for you. Shauna, her forecast will tell you what to wear. Alicia, her down to the mile traffic will keep you in the clear. Adrian and Daniela, they'll break down all the morning's breaking news so nothing takes you by surprise. It's simple. You wake up, we'll open your eyes. Today in LA for you. Starting at 4 a.m.